Hey guys, this is God of Politics, and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be analyzing the Nevada caucus results, which are now 88% reporting. When the vote was about 4% reporting, I think they called it for Bernie Sanders, who at the time had about, I think, 47% of the vote, which is what he still has now with 88% of the vote. Um, and we're going to be going over what I think of the results here. Uh, and how I think it's going to affect the future races and who I think is going to be the nominee. And yeah, so first we'll start out by saying Bernie Sanders is obviously the clear winner of the night. He won by 27 points or 26 points over Joe Biden. Uh, that's a pretty significant victory considering that Joe Biden was leading in the polls up until Iowa when he had a very disappointing performance. And obviously in New Hampshire he had a very disappointing performance as well. But I think that you can't write off Joe Biden just yet. I think you could consider Joe Biden a winner of the night, uh, at least one of the winners, because Joe Biden was able to come in second place with 21% of the vote ahead of Pete Buttigieg, who did much better than him in, in New Hampshire. Joe Biden came fifth place in New Hampshire. And you see a lot of people do very disappointing. Amy Klobuchar only getting 3.9% of the delegates after coming second, uh, third Third place, yes, third place in New Hampshire, which was very good for her. Elizabeth Warren, also very disappointing. She attacked Michael Bloomberg after she had her loss and said, thank you for keeping me in this fight. I'm not really sure how that makes any sense, but that is what she said. That is what she said. She said that she is going to continue fighting. She has raised a lot of money recently after her debate uh, when she ripped into Michael, Michael Bloomberg, but it hasn't seemed to help her here. In Nevada, as she only got 10% of the vote, a lot of the vote that was in the polls seemed to go to Bernie. And speaking of polls, we can compare the actual results to uh, the polls. The polls had underestimated Bernie. In New Hampshire, we saw they overestimated Bernie. In, in Nevada, they underestimated Bernie by 15 points, which is a large margin. But Biden, not too far off at 20. Pete, not too far off at 16 within the margin of error. Warren, they, they almost missed it, but it's also within the margin of error, and Klobuchar was off, and Steyer was off too. I think in the terms of the popular vote, it wasn't too far off. Actually, yes, yeah, so the first vote, the popular vote, which is what it measures, was actually almost spot on in this case. Klobuchar got 9, Steyer got 9, as the polls said. Warren got 12.8, and in the poll she had 14, which is which is pretty close. Buttigieg did 15.2, Brown had 17.9. They were both pretty close there. And Bernie had 34.3, and Bernie had 32.5 in the poll. So the polls were actually pretty accurate here, but it didn't equate to actual results in terms of the number of delegates. And I don't think all of the delegates have been assigned yet, all of the national delegates. But we know that Bernie Sanders is going to expand his lead when he was losing by one before to Pete Buttigieg, he is now leading by a lot. And I think this will put Joe Biden into second place. Actually, he might still be behind Pete Buttigieg. But yeah, looking at the betting odds now, we see that Bernie has shot up. He went down to 39% and Bloomberg peaked at 35%. And now Bernie is all the way up to 55%. Bloomberg especially falling down after the debate. He went from 33 to 21 Bloomberg stayed a bit stagnant since then. Biden has gone down, Booty Judge has gone down, and Bernie has soared. It looks very increasingly likely that Bernie is going to be the nominee. But looking at the polls here, we can see that in South Carolina, Biden is still winning in the polls. You might think that after after uh, Steyer's poor performance in Nevada, Steyer may fall down uh, because of that. And I would assume most of his support would go to Biden because, as we can see here, um, I'm not really sure how he rose so quickly. He rose from 10 to 16.5 within a couple of polls, and he has remained there. But Biden is still the front runner. He said that it's predominantly black. It was won by Barack Obama in 2008, and it was won by Hillary Clinton, both going on to be the nominees. Um, so this is still going to be important, and it's most important for Joe Biden, because if Joe Biden does not win the state, his campaign is basically over. Sanders is going to trounce him, and it basically hands Biden the moderate vote over to Michael Bloomberg. And now you might argue that Klobuchar should drop out, Warren should drop out, Buttigieg should drop out. I pretty much agree with those, because I can't see them having a path to victory after this. Klobuchar and Buttigieg both had 3 and 2% support from the black community, respectively. Uh, Warren has very little as well, and I just don't think that they have any path to victory, especially with Buttigieg 
uh, and Klobuchar. Klobuchar, especially not having enough money. Warren doesn't have enough money, but I don't think she can spend it enough. All the progressive votes going to Bernie as Bernie's been rising nationally as well, which we'll look at. Buttigieg is no power figure because I don't think he has enough name recognition and can't take enough of the moderate vote away from Biden because I think if Biden does poorly, most of that vote is going to go to uh, Michael Bloomberg. But looking at the national polls here, we see Bernie has been rising. Uh, he's been on a steady rise here. He was at 23%. He is now at 29%. Biden's been drastically falling at the expense of uh, – Bloomberg's been rising at the expense of Joe Biden. Bloomberg took a little bit of a dip. He was at uh, 16. He's now at 15. Gone down one ward. has gone up like maybe one point, but it seems to have not helped her in Nevada. I think that her campaign is basically over because of that. Um and we can also see Buttigieg has been on the rise, but he is now stagnated and starting to go down. Klobuchar has been on the rise, but I think she will start to go down as well. Um, and you see in many of the Super Tuesday states, North Carolina, for example, Sanders is up because Bloomberg and Biden are splitting the vote. California, Sanders is up because Bloomberg and Biden are splitting the vote. Texas, Sanders is up because Bloomberg and Biden are splitting the vote. And this could really just hand Bernie the nomination because of the fact that the moderates are splitting the vote. If you combine the moderates for the results in the Nevada caucuses, the moderates would have won. Joe Biden, for example, could have won. If you combine him with Pete Buttigieg, uh, Amy Klobuchar, and, and Tom Steyer in terms of the popular vote, they probably would have gotten the most delegates. And you could say the same thing about Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, but I don't think it's to the same effect. Um, Nevada is a disproportionately liberal state as well. Um, and I think that it, that did bode well for Bernie. Bernie won all metrics of the vote except for the black vote. He lost by a bit. Looking at the precinct map, you see Buttigieg did win the rural counties as he was expected to. Um, Clark County, the main county, was won by Bernie Sanders. It was also Joe Biden's best county, which is what propelled him into second place here. But Buttigieg, poor showing. Elizabeth Warren, poor showing. Tom Steyer, poor showing. Amy Klobuchar, poor showing. Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders doing well. Bernie Sanders obviously doing the best. Joe Biden doing a little bit worse than that, but still doing well. Um, and how would this affect Michael Bloomberg? I think that Michael Bloomberg shouldn't be too upset about this. I think that if Biden does lose South Carolina at this point, Bloomberg is basically propelled into second place and even almost the front runner status if all the modern vote can go behind him. Um, but my prediction, at least from now, is that Bernie uh, Biden is still going to win South Carolina by a, li a little margin. I think that will propel him to be able to win some of the two versus eight states, and that could make it worse for Bloomberg and better for Bernie because there's more splitting of the vote in states that Bloomberg might have been higher in before. And um, I think because of that, if Biden does with South Carolina, he still will have a chance to the nomination. I think the chances are a lot lower now. I think chances as the betting odds say, I would line up with what the betting odds say, Bernie does have about a 50-50 chance of winning the nomination at this point. Um, and yeah. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I just wanted to analyze the results of this. We're going to be doing a lot more videos this week. We have some election predictions coming. We'll be doing some more political analysis, but it is going to be a busy week for me, so I'm not sure how consistent I'm going to be. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe as always. It was a short video, but I hope you enjoyed anyway, and I will see you guys later.